The Pingino installer for the WiseCam V3 just got even easier and more reliable. Let me show you how. What's up guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. If you're new to this channel, I make videos about Linux, open source, hardware hacking, AI, and the Thingino open source firmware project. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use my new No Tools installer for the WiseCam V3 to set your camera free. If you haven't used Thingino before, I've got an introduction video on it here. But in a nutshell, Thingino is an open source firmware replacement for cameras using Ingenic processors that removes them from the manufacturer's cloud ecosystem and puts you back in control of your devices and your data. We support over 100 different cameras already, and we support industry standard OnVIF and RTSP protocols. It's perfect for folks running Home Assistant, Frigate, or any one of the other great choices that support standard protocols. So here I have a fresh WiseCam V3 running factory firmware. We're going to change that together. You'll need a micro SD card. Any size will do as long as it's at least 128 megabytes. I'm using a 32 gig card because it's what I have handy, but it really doesn't matter. Let's pop it in and jump over to Windows. We're going to use Belena Etcher to write our SD card. It's a pretty nice tool, and it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac systems, so anybody can follow along. Let's go ahead and download it. Pick the version that matches your operating system. And while that downloads, let's open up a new tab to my Thingino installers repo. The link for that is in the video description, so go ahead and click it there. Now once you've got it up, go ahead and navigate into the WiseCam 3 folder and we're going to click on the WiseCam 3 SD.zip then over here on the right, click this little download button. One of the nice features of Etcher is that it can handle a compressed image automatically so we don't even have to unzip our file. So both of these are downloaded, let's go ahead and open Etcher and get started. You'll first need to choose your image. Just point it to the zip file that we just downloaded. Then we pick the target device. Make sure you get the correct one for your SD card. Go ahead and hit flash. That'll prompt you and make sure you want to be able to write stuff. And then it'll start working its magic. Since the image itself is pretty small, it doesn't take long at all for it to write. It'll also verify the image and make sure that it was written correctly. And once it's done, you can go ahead and eject the card and say bye bye to Windows for now. So here we go again. I've got my freshly written SD card and we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the camera. The SD card door is on the bottom Make sure you put the card in the right direction. It only goes in one way and push it until it clicks. Now we can go ahead and power it up. The installer does all the work for us. We're going to let this happen in real time so you have an idea of how long it takes. While it does its thing, I'll walk you through the steps that it's taking. First, we're using a special file name that will override the normal boot up process. This is a Linux kernel with an included initial RAM disk, which starts up and runs the script we've written. There are actually five different versions of the WiseCam V3, so our script will automatically detect the hardware that you have. There are three different processors they used and two different Wi-Fi chipsets, but we support them all with just three different firmware files, which are included in that SD card image. Once we've detected the right device, we make a backup of your factory firmware image. If you ever want to go back to stock and use the WISE firmware again, you need the image from your exact device. So when this is all complete, make sure to copy it off the SD card and archive it somewhere. Once the firmware backup is done, we write the Thingino bootloader. 
We use U-Boot, the same as what WISE is using, but a fully featured version that has a lot of awesome features, including being able to flash images directly. Next, we rename the firmware image that's right for your device to the magic file name to trigger a full flash, which is auto-update-full.bin. We also rename the special file that got us into our alternate boot, then we cleanly unmount the card and reboot. The bootloader will see that file name and start flashing the firmware. This only takes a minute, and when it's done, it'll create a new file named autoupdate-full.done, which prevents it from flashing a second time. At this point, we want to go ahead and get our phone out and bring up our Wi-Fi network list. When the flashing is complete, your camera will create a new Wi-Fi network that starts with Ingino that you connect to for setup. And here it is. Let's go ahead and pick it. Now on most devices, you'll automatically be taken to the config portal. But if not, you can open your browser to 172.16.0.1. Once you're there, you have a few things to set. You can change the camera's host name, you can set the root password, which is used for the web UI and SSH, and you set your Wi-Fi credentials. The WiseCam V3 only supports 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, so make sure you're giving it the correct credentials for one of those. Also, the SSID and password are both case sensitive. I've got mine entered. Let's go ahead and hit save credentials and take us to the confirmation page. Here you can review the settings that you've put in, make sure everything looks good, and then hit proceed. That'll reboot the camera, and then it'll come up on your designated Wi-Fi. You can check your router's Wi-Fi client list to get the IP address of your new camera, or you can wait until it's finished booting, and you can tap the setup button, and it'll read its IP out to you out loud. We're going to give it just a moment to boot up, and we'll do it that way. Now the light has finished blinking, let's tap the setup button. So there you go. Now you can put that IP address into your web browser. Now you'll be taken to a login page where you log in as root with the password that you entered on the config portal. And now here we go, we have our camera online. Go ahead and check out the options in the menu. Note the credentials for OnVIF and RTSP if you're adding it to an NVR. By default, it's Thingino for both username and password. And you can change the password in the settings. Well, there you go. Hopefully things went as smoothly for you as they did for me. If not, you can always get support through our GitHub, or better yet, through our Discord channel, which is a great place to hang out and participate in Thingino, as well as a lot of other fun topics and projects we have going on. Now, of course, I always mention, if you don't already own a WiseCam V3, I don't recommend buying one just for Thingino. There are better devices for less money out there. Check the video description for my favorite. I'm adding install videos for new devices as I develop them, so go ahead and check my channel for other options that are easy to flash as well. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. Check the description for the link to the installer's repo, our homepage, and our Discord channel. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like these sort of topics, make sure to subscribe as well. Take care, everybody. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, stay fresh, cheese bags.